Hello Wolfpack, we're going to be talking about quite a bit today, buckle up, uh, get your bloody seatbelts on, it's going to be a bit of a ride today because there's a lot going on in the market right now and we've dropped actually below the 2017 all-time high, this is as expected, uh, we weren't expecting this to hold, I mean all you need to do is zoom out uh, and take a look at, for example, let me get the chart up, take a look at the example, um, you know, the difference between the bear market lows and you can see those are narrowing quite intensely, which means, you know, you're eventually going to retest that all-time high. With diminishing returns, it's simply impossible that you don't retest the all-time high from the previous cycle. I mean, all you need to do is go ahead and check out, you know, what was the difference between the all-time high in 2013 and 2018, see 1,500%. What's, what was the difference between the all-time high in uh, 2022 and 2017? And you see it's 254%. So of course you're going to go down and test the all-time high for the previous cycle. Uh, a lot of people are surprised by that. Not really too sure why, but we have done it, right? That's that's the main point. We've done it. We've gone below 20K, gone below 19.7K, wherever it was. And we're currently sitting in that 19K region. Uh, and the reason why this next 24 hours is so important as outlined yesterday is that, well, as you guys would know, Bitcoin's never actually dropped below or never actually closed you know, decisively, it has closed below it technically, but never decisively below the 200 week SMA, which is this green line here. Uh, and if we close below 22.3K uh, in the next 24 hours, so in the next 24 hours, we close below 22.3K, which would be where the 200 week SMA is, we're actually dropping below the 200 week SMA and closing below it decisively for the first time in Bitcoin's price history. Now, if you were really technical about it, you could say, well, we saw a couple weekly candle closes just below it in 2015. And in 2020, we saw a weekly candle close about 2% below it, but nothing decisive, nothing clear like this, right? If we close here at 20K or at 19K or whatever, you know, that's a clear breakdown from a 200 week SMA. That is definitely lost, and we never have seen that before. And so that would be interesting to see. And so I suppose if that happens, and this is not new information, we've talked about this quite a bit, if that happens, it's like, well, we're tossed completely in the dark, right? And this is what I don't like about the current Bitcoin situation. I don't like trying to sit here and tell you guys, oh, where's the bottom going to be exactly? And when's it going to be exactly? Because I, I simply can't tell you that because all of the macro evidence we have for Bitcoin right now is based off the four-year cycle and it's based off a 200-week SMA. The four-year cycle is suggesting we bottom out in Q4 and the 200-week SMA is lost. So half of our macro evidence is just cut right down the middle. We don't have it anymore. And so as for the price point, I know Megawell Crypto's uh, saying the bottom is most likely in uh, at 18k. He is open to a lower price, but he says 18k is most likely where the bottom is going to be. Uh, he's got a, he's got his own macro chart that he drew up there. Uh, I I would personally say the four year cycle is much more important than the macro chart he's drawn up. And I think that the four year cycle is not good at predicting price points. He's drawn a site he's drawn a chart on the macro uh, that's trying to predict the price target. That's fine. It, it's completely valid. However, the four year cycle doesn't try to predict price targets. It tries to predict date ranges, right? The 200 week SMA is what tries to predict price targets, in my opinion, and that's been lost. And if that's been lost, who bloody knows where the bottom's gonna be, right? It's anyone's best guess. What we can say is it's probably gonna be towards Q4. But again, I say that with a grain of salt, probably. Because the market's not acting rationally right now. This is not rational price action, you know? You don't just drop from 48K all the way down to 17K with one green weekly candle in between. And hey, it wasn't even green. It was like 1% green, right? That's not rational price action. You can say what you want. This is not a rational market. And so to make rational price predictions is very, very hard to make in a, in a market that's acting, that's acting irrationally. And I suppose you could say, well, why is it acting irrationally? What's wrong with the market right now? Why is this going on? S&P 500 is a perfect example of what's going on, right? What we can go ahead and do, and this is what we did in the last videos, is we took a fractal from a 2008 drop, right? 2008, that's 2008 there. If we zoomed up, we can take that fractal out. We applied it to the current price region. If you guys didn't know, 2008 was the global financial recession, okay? So um, what we essentially saw, global financial crisis, sorry. What we essentially saw was a recession. Well, we're seeing a recession right now, and all we need to do is overlay the fractal in and adjust it to size and see that even on the same time frame, this is a weekly time frame, the same time frame, we can see that this is playing out perfectly, right? Bitcoin is doing the exact same thing it's done in 2008. And if it continues to do the exact same thing it did in 2008, it will likely bottom out between October and August at around uh, 2,500 to around 2,800. So the best case scenario based on the fractal is we drop another 22% in the SP500, which would throw Bitcoin down in a tumble even further, right? Now, what you'll notice, okay, I said before, I said previously a lot, I've been saying this quite a bit, 
I say, oh, Q4 is going to be the bottom for Bitcoin. Q4, because that's what the four-year cycle says, Q4. However, this fractal on the 2008 crash suggests August to October. Yeah, October is technically Q4, but August is certainly not Q4. And then if we're looking further and we kind of see and we kind of analyze what happens typically in the SP500, we could actually see that the bottom could be a little bit earlier than Q4, possibly around August, right? And this is what I've been looking at quite a bit recently. Uh, and this, okay, so let me just take a step back. I'll put it on the log scale so you guys can see. And this is a bit a bit difficult to explain, so you're going to have to bear with me for a second. But what I've got ahead and done is I've outlined, as you can see, these yellow lines, the previous kind of major bottoms, the major bottoming out periods on the SP 500 following recessions, right? So September 74, uh, November 90, and then uh, 2009, right? Those are the bottoming out periods on the SP 500. I've gone ahead and gone to the uh, inflation rates during those period of times, and you can see that at the same time the S&P 500 bottoms out, the inflation rate tops out on all three of the occasions. So with that logic in mind, we shouldn't be seeing a bottom on the S&P 500 until the inflation rate tops out. And who knows what that will be? That's way out of my pay grade. I'm not an economist, right? I don't know where that's gonna be, but you know, if I had to take a guess, if I had to you know, give you a little insight, I would say it's probably in Q3 this year. I don't think it's gonna be in Q4. I think it will be in Q3 this year, the inflation rate will top out and hence, the SP 500 will probably top out in Q3, maybe late Q3, as per this fractal in the 2008 crash. This is all connected, right? And so if the SP 500 bottoms out in Q3, that would mean Bitcoin will likely bottom out in Q3, which would partially, I, I wouldn't say it invalidates the four year cycle theory, but it would change up the data a little bit. You have to remember the four year cycle theory, although it's a trend, right? It's very much a trend. It's got three data points. Uh, it is not a you know, very clear trend at this point. We need more data to refine it. There's a reason why I'm saying Q4, right? If it was a precise trend, I'd say November 17th or this week in November. I'm saying Q4 because it's not quite there yet. It's pretty vague, right? And so for it to be slightly altered back into Q3, you know, it, it, it could work. It could work. I don't know. I'm just basing it off the SP500 right now. What I'm saying is, there's a slight chance here, as per the fractal, as per the in inflation rate, as per my guess and where inflation is going, that we bottom out in around August. You know, August, you know, would be, uh, you'd be pushing it, to be honest, but that's that's what it suggests, at least, okay? So, and then you're looking at the uh, US interest rates, right? And you can see, during the same period, the S&P 500 bottomed out, so we've seen inflation, inflation tops out when the S&P 500 bottoms out, okay? That's all, I should say, when the inflation tops out, the S&P 500 bottoms out, that's what I should say. And then what's interest rates doing in that period, right? So in that same period, interest rates are either at the top or they're decreasing. And so it would kind of assume that when interest rates top out or start to decrease, the S&P 500 tops out, uh, bottoms out and starts to increase, okay? Very, very vague predictions here, but it's an interesting trend to start to note because when we can start to see, you know, this isn't really relevant right now, but it is relevant in the future because when we see inflation start to top out, when we see those CPI numbers start to dip down, that could be the indication that the bottom is bottom is in for the S&P 500, and that could be the indication that the bottom is in for Bitcoin, right? So I know I've said over and over and over again, Q4 is going to be the bottom. I still think it is. I still think Q Q4 is going to be the bottom. But there are doubts, right? There are doubts that's coming into my mind right now because given the haste, given the speed of this drop, it, it just doesn't. It doesn't seem. You know, it doesn't seem like it's it's going to hold up like that in a certain way. It's very hard to explain, right? But essentially, Bitcoin can only get so low, otherwise it dies, right? There's only a certain price that Bitcoin goes to, otherwise it dies. And there's only a certain price Bitcoin goes to before it's held up purely by people who are rich, who are not inf infected uh, by the recession. I know most people are, but there's people out there who are not affected by the recession. They'll make money during the recession, right? And so... When If Bitcoin gets that price earlier than expected, which by the way, I mean, we've dropped down so quickly, it looks like it might do that. Maybe the Q4 bottom could be invalidated. Look, this kind of goes to show, and I think my indecisiveness in the market kind of goes to show right now that, you know, all the TA at this point is being thrown out the window to a certain extent, right? You know, the only thing I'm kind of relying on here is a trend with the SP 500, a fractal on the SP 500. I'm relying on the four year cycle a little bit and I'm relying on support zones, right? Previously, I would have relied on a 200 week SMA. We've lost it. It's gone, right? It will, it will be gone in 24 hours. If I mean, we could make a miraculous recovery. I see it as unlikely, but you know, that's gone, right? So what, what left is there? Well, now it's just guessing, okay, when's it going to be and where is it going to be based on very literal data other than the four year cycle, which gives us a very rough guideline. 
right? So this is the situation we're in right now. We're tossed into kind of this situation in which it's like, well, we have to make a, a really vague guess. And there's going to be people calling the bottom on every step of the way, right? We have support zones, resistance zones. We have a support zone, 17.1K. There's people calling the bottom there. Mega World Crypto's called the bottom there. We've got support zones at 13.5K, 11.5K. We've got support down here at 9K. There's people who are going to be calling the bottom all the way down at each separate level. I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to fall victim to that kind of mindset. I personally, me personally, I would rather, and I know people don't like this because they want to catch the bottom and feel like they're a bloody genius, right? But I would rather wait until this inflation tops out. I would rather wait until the SP 500 shows signs of a macro bottom, which according to the fractal would be around August to October. I would rather wait until Bitcoin makes a clear trend reversal, breaks above, say, at least 23.8K, which is a, a resistance level in which we form a higher high from and break this uh, kind of downwards trend, right? If we break above 23.8K, that's that's a new structure we've got there. That would be where I, I would start to be like, okay, maybe this is the bottom, right? But, you know, at this point, it's kind of me just weighing up, okay, what's more important here? The SP 500, interest rates and inflation, or the four-year cycle, or just my blind speculation based off TA. And I can't make a clear decision on that. So what I'm going to say to you guys right now is that I personally don't know where the bottom's going to be. I've got a rough indication of where the bottom's going to be, right? I, I, like, no, sorry. I don't. Per I personally don't know where the bottom's going to be. I've got a rough indication on when the bottom's going to be. It's even going to be probably late Q3 into Q4 somewhere. That's where, when it's going to be. And I, I, I'm judging that based on the macroeconomic situation, right? Interest rates are going to stop hiking around that point. The S&P might find a bottom. Inflation will top out. You know, the market might reverse around then. That's pretty clear. I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. Uh, but a lot of people are also getting caught up in the speed of this drop. And they're saying, oh, the bottom's in right now. It's like, well, how's the bottom in right now, right? Do you think the S&P 500 bottom is in right now? If not, then how do you think the Bitcoin bottom is in right now? Because, you know, Bitcoin's tied to the S&P. This is kind of a thing I, I, I kind of pose to people, right? I say, okay, so in order for Bitcoin to bottom out, these are the scenarios. So scenario one, this is how Bitcoin bottoms out. Bitcoin depegs from the traditional markets and it bottoms out sooner than traditional markets. That's scenario one. Now, based off every single shred of evidence we have in the market ever, other than wild speculation, this is not going to be the case. It could happen. But the point is we have absolutely no evidence for it happening. So we can cross that out. So Bitcoin DPEGs, probably not going to happen. Toss that aside, right? Scenario two for Bitcoin bottoming out, the S&P bottoms. That's the one I'm going for because that's the one we have evidence for. We have evidence that Bitcoin is tied to traditional markets and to the traditional markets. And so when the traditional markets bottom out, Bitcoin should bottom out. And hopefully that will tie up with the four-year cycle theory around Q4. That's what I'm going with. However, it's very hard to tell when that's going to happen. And that's why we're seeing in this video, me just being like totally indefinite, totally indecisive about what's going on because I need more data, right? Everything I do in, in TA, everything anyone does as TA is based off data. And when the data is so, so minuscule and so, so vague, it's very, very hard to give you a pre precise uh, price prediction other than saying, oh yeah, we've got a support level here. You know, if I had to guess, if I had to give you a pure guess on the market right now, and this is what I've been saying quite a bit. If I had to give you my best guess as to where the bottom will be, and I don't see this as a reliable guess at all, even myself, right? I would guess that the bottom would be between 13.5K and 11.5K in Q4. That would be my best guess. And then you'd say, well, what are we going to see between now and then? Would we see a dead cat bounce? Would we see that kind of thing? You know, looking at previous cycles, again, because we have to look at the previous data, we didn't necessarily see many dead cat bounces on the way down. Right, I mean, you know, uh, uh, when, when we finally entered that final drop, right, in 2014, we just saw a straight down. In 2018, we saw that final drop, we just saw straight down. 2020, straight down. We didn't see dead cap bounces in that final drop. We've already seen the consolidation. So, you know, who knows, right? I, don't, I simply don't, I can't tell you. But what I can say is that if we break above, and this is the trend reversal point. So I said before, 23.8K, that wouldn't be a full trend reversal. I wouldn't be convinced the bottom's in from a break of 23.8K. That's a little bit too preliminary for me. Uh, I would say the absolute complete confirmation that the bottom is in for Bitcoin is, is, is if the SPX bottoms out, inflation tops out, and we break above the 50-week SMA. A lot of guidelines, right? But that's what it is. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. Uh, I think as more evidence comes, comes into the market, as we get more price action other than just straight down, more consolidation, whatever, it's going to become a little bit more clearer than the bottom will be. But again, if I had to give you my best guess, which is a very rough guess, I'd say 11.5K to 13.5K in Q4, maybe the end of Q3, but probably Q4. 
that would be my best guess as to where the bottom will be. Again, you're going to be seeing a lot of indecisive wolf uh, over the next probably few months, to be honest with you. Uh, but, you know, as I said, I think as more data comes in, we might be able to be a little bit more precise. But what I can say is that I think it's way better for me to be indecisive than for me to just be like, oh, yeah, that's the bottom's right here, guys. Bye, bye, bye. And then everyone loses money because I'm constantly calling the bottom every three days, right? I don't think that's a good idea. So I think I'd rather be honest and say, I don't really know. And, and just try to, you know, rather than try to catch the bottom per se, you know, try to do that a little bit, obviously, but try to mainly focus on when the trend reversal is going to be because most, you know, at the end of the day, guys, right? And even even people like Megawell, right? Who thinks the bottom is in, is, in, is going to say this. He says, okay, I think the bottom is in at 18K. That's what he says. But I don't think you should buy with a major part of your portfolio at 18K because I could be wrong. And that, that's the best way to go about it. And he says, when there's a trend reversal, that's when you should buy with a major portion of your portfolio. I 100% agree. 100% agree with that because... In any aspect of TA, in any aspect of trading, in any aspect of investing, you should not be buying what you think is the bottom. You should be buying when the trend reverses, when you have confirmation. That's why we wait, we wait for breakouts. We don't trade the ranges. Obviously, we trade ranges a little bit, but we don't like put our life savings in when Bitcoin's ranging in a 2%. No, we trade when it breaks out. That's the most That's the most potential profit at the lowest potential risk. That's when you trade, right? So it's the same thing with macro bottoms. Everyone who wants to be out here catching the bottom, like, you know, it, it's a bit more complicated than that. You're not, you're not going to get the bottom. I mean, unless we see a long consolidation like we saw in 2018, which again is likely, right? We might see when we reach that bottom, and this is why the bottom might become evidence later. It might become evident later because it might become more evident later because we might see consolidation on the bottom. And when we see consolidation on a low price level, it's very likely to be the bottom. Just as, we, as when we see consolidation at a high price level, it's likely to be at the top. And so... As of current, right now, very hard to say. Ask me in two months, we might have been going sideways at this very price point for two months. It might become very clear that, hey, maybe this is the bottom, right? Very hard to say right now. It's too early. It's too preliminary to call the bottom. Uh, and I still think even if it was the bottom here, you'd be better off buying it the trend reversal rather than the bottom because we don't know what the S&P 500 is going to do. We think it's going to go down another 22%. I just don't see personally... You know, I personally just don't see how Bitcoin can bottom out here at 18K when the S&P 500 has another 22% to go down according to a fractal and according to interest rates and inflation. I, I just, it simply just doesn't make sense to me. I would say the bottom would be lower. I would say it's probably in Q4, end of Q3. Eh, but I don't really know. <laughs> All right, so that's the video, guys. Uh, actually, no, it's not, right? I want to talk about one more thing. Uh, total cryptocurrency market cap, okay? And I want to talk about, a lot to talk about today. I want to talk about as well... Um, where is this stuff here? Uh, this kind of, you know, you know, percentage decrease from the tops, right? So in previous cycles, we've seen in 2014, for example, we saw an 86% decrease from the top to the bear market bottom, right? 2018, 84% decrease from the top to the bear market bottom. And if we went to 13.5K, which is where I think the most likely bottom is going to be, uh, that would be an 80% decrease. And it would make a lot more sense, right? Because we're seeing a subtle depreciation and, you know, 86%, 84%, 80%. Makes sense to me. Anyway, uh, moving forward further. Uh, let me bring it back up here. Total cryptocurrency market cap. All right, so this is a chart that measures, let me bring it up, uh, the total cryptocurrency market cap of Bitcoin. So every, of crypto. So every single dollar wrapped up in crypto is this chart. That's what it's representing. Every single dollar wrapped up in cryptocurrency. And so what we can go ahead and do is we can actually flip over this chart and we can say that, hey, it's actually had an inverted head and shoulders pattern, some sort of inverted head and shoulders pattern, a very rough one, right? But it's had it, and it's broken out of the neckline, and it's currently in a breakout. And if we take a measured move from the bottom of the neck, from the bottom of the uh, head to the top of the neckline, apply it to a breakout point, we can see that this thing is targeting a lot higher prices, which means a lot lower prices. And what we can go ahead and do is say, okay, well, let's think logically. It's not going to go back to you know 200 billion like it just targeted. But it could go a lot lower than it is right now. And assuming Bitcoin's probably going to go lower as well, we can list out the next major support zone, which would be $572 billion. Uh, and that, that's probably the target for where we're going uh, on the total cryptocurrency market cap. So lower to go there as well. But other than that, that's about it. I want to quickly shout out uh, Wolves Crypto VIP. Go to the YouTube channel, click the join button. Uh, you know, as you guys would know, I'm a trader first and foremost. Doesn't really bother me where the Bitcoin bottom is too much. I'd like to find it, but it doesn't bother me because I trade daily, right? So what we can see here is you get exclusive altcoin trading signals, one every second day, uh, custom emojis, loyalty badges next to your name to show off your kind of, you know, 
I don't know, uh, honor to the wolf pack. <laughs> Priority reply to comments. Two hour video on market psychology, commonly referred to as the most use useful video I've ever made. Uh, and then Walk Leakly newsletter access, which will be dropping tomorrow, exclusive to the VIP members there. Uh, moving forward, we've got BitGet Exchange. BitGet is the exchange we use for Walk Week, uh, Wolves Crypto VIP. Uh, so we use futures on this exchange, we use spot on Binance. Futures is very useful right now because the market has been downtrending for like, what, 12 weeks straight, just from 48K straight up with one green weekly candle. So, you know, short positions have been paying off massively here. And this is how we use shorting on BitGet. Half the fees of Binance, no KYC. You can't go wrong with it. Go ahead and check out the BitGet exchange and sign up using my referral link to get rewards there, up to $4,000 in rewards. Uh, moving forward. The Crypto Academy, become a trader, a 10 unit course. Uh, if you want to learn how to trade during the bear market, if you want to learn how to do TA, if you want to learn how to stop being so foolish, right? And just trying to, you know, oh, this is the bottom here, this is the bottom, and just getting it wrong every time. Actually learn how to do TA, actually learn how to trade, actually put the time and effort in, and maybe next cycle, you'll do a lot better than you did this cycle, right? Become a trader, 10 unit course, everything you need to know about TA in 10 units, market patterns, concepts, everything. Psychology, how to find trades. Literally everything you need to know, 450 slides, 80 videos, uh, 10 units, 40 hours of content for the average person there. Uh, and you can go ahead and check out our reviews on Trustpilot and email us here on cryptoacademycourses.gmail.com. Join over 100 students here. Uh, you won't be in short company. There's lots of people doing the course right now uh, and lots of people working their way through. And I know a few people have finished it and a few people have written reviews there. So go ahead and check all of that out. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.